Want to see how I made this cheese press? Keep watching. We found some plans for a cheese press online and I'm going to go ahead and try and build that. The first thing I'm going to work on here is the lever arm. So the, the directions recommend drilling holes in these side pieces for the lever arm and kind of pinning the whole piece together before you glue it and, uh, and put it all together. That way you know the distances are going to be accurate and the, and the, the pieces are lined up accurately. So here we go. I wish I had used a drill press for this step. Eyeballing it worked, but the press would have been a little easier to use if these holes were more perfectly perpendicular. I just didn't want to make a special trip out to use my dad's drill press when I was heading out there again after these parts were glued together. So this next part that I'm working on, I'm not sure what it's called, the guide blocks I think. I've taken just some relatively cheap 2x6's and cut them down so that I got 2 inch pieces sandwiched in with 1.5 inch pieces to re basically come out with the, the five and a half inches that a normal two by six would be. And the square opening in the middle will be just right for the plunger. So I'll go ahead and glue these together. Later on I'll be able to sand these things smooth so that the wood will look a little nicer.
we just let it dry. <clears throat> the reason we're recreating this two by six dimension so accurately is so that it'll match up the base and the, and the back part. So I'm here out at my dad's to use a few of his shop tools. This is a table sander. It's got a drum sander in here and you just slowly lower it onto the material to shave these things down so that they're nice and flat. Later on I'll also be using the, the drill press and the table saw.
time to assemble these parts. With the directions online, it mentioned to trim this paddle piece here five and three quarters inch from the pin position to this direction. So I've done that. And it also mentioned to go 20 inches from the pin position this way for a notch. That way, when you use the cheese press, whatever you're hanging on there will have a place to grab. This isn't actually part of the cheese press. It's just a spacing jig to get different holes lined up and to make sure these two pieces are spaced far enough apart.
three pounds. What kind of a weight would you use on the end? It's just like a water bottle or something. I can always make your uh, divot a little uh, bigger to grab onto if you need something. This will probably be a pound. Almost two pounds. Hammer off the end. Let's see what something a little heavier does. It's ten pounds. Ten and a quarter pound. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll just have to do that to figure out how much to do with it, and then. You like it? That's nice. Good. Yeah. Are you going to sand it down a little more? I could. It's pretty rustic. Yeah. I'd like to have it sanded down a little more. And are you going to stain it? Yeah, I can put the Danish oil on. Yeah. I mean, it's got exposed screws, so there's not a lot of yeah, I'm sanding not, that's going to I'm not help. worried so much about that. I just don't want to end up with little pieces of wood shavings in my cheese. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can you also tell me how wide this gap is? Yeah. So that I can look at my cheese supplier store. And it's 12 inches.